All right. Uh, hi, friends. Uh, if you're new here, uh, welcome to our humble podcast where we talk about anything Filipinas football. And to our regular listeners, hello. Um, we're back. So today it's a post uh, World Cup podcast episode. Uh, this took a while because I was on the go traveling from one place to another and honestly did not have enough uh, time and energy to sit down and so I've just been uploading bits and pieces of the World Cup journey through social media and then and by the Filipinas went home and uh, I didn't want to bother Jack or Kent so they can fully enjoy all the events and celebrations back home. I'm currently in Melbourne and tonight I'm joined by the friends of the pod uh, Kent and Jack and tonight We'll also have um said from the Kali Adriatico podcast. So welcome guys. Thanks again for um joining me tonight. Max Naman. Uh so just to kick things off, let's talk about our World Cup experience. Where were you? Sakay na naod. Um just to talk about that experience in general. Plus like what was it like for you? I guess let's start with uh Kent. Uh, first of all, good evening to all uh, the listeners of Football Brew and thank, uh, thanks as always, Ben, for inviting me. Um, there's this feeling uh, with the days needing to the Women's World Cup, it is still yet to sink in. <laughs> it's like, uh, are we really in the Women's World Cup? And the thing is, you don't realize it unless you are in front of a big screen showing our Filipinas playing in the Women's World Cup. So that's the feeling. Um, it's, a, it's a short experience, like um, three, three games in a span of nine days. But as a football fan, it's the most joyous that I've ever been. I mean, the experience, uh, the ladies proving that the Filipinas and the Philippines belong with the world's best when it comes to women's football. Um, I've watched the games in the PFF watch parties in different um, Ayala malls alongside with uh, my brothers in uh, Ultras Filipinas. And it, it's, a, it's a great experience just to see um, a lot of faces in the football community. It's like in those times we were really united. You can see players from... UAAP teams, players from grassroots clubs, um, media personalities, or your fellow fans, you're all watching and enjoying this momentous, uh, this momentous occasions together. Um, it's like a rare occurrence of togetherness in our very diverse football uh, community. And until now, I still can't believe that <laughs> we're a part of this. It's still yet to really fully sink in a the Filipinas made it and we didn't become pushovers. We we went there and made a good account of ourselves in our maiden Women's World Cup appearance. Thank you, Kent. You wanna um second uh said oh uh first of all good evening good evening then and thanks for having me here. Um well, to just to echo Kent's statement, yeah, the this feeling has been pretty surreal. Uh, I was actually in Auckland for the third game. Uh, I'm bummed that I wasn't able to be there personally for the win against New Zealand. But yeah, just seeing the Filipinas uh play live in their first ever World Cup. I don't think uh I can beat that feeling anytime soon. Uh this has been like uh the pinnacle for our sport here. Uh the experience was the experience was really really uh eye opening. Like uh you can see the support of our countrymen. They were all behind the girls, like, ane, parang, panaba. 
sana magawa rin dito sa atin eh yung naga, nagawa din sa New Zealand because parang you hahanapan natin may pakiramdam na yun eh na a pack crowd tapos punong-puno ng Pilipino na nagchi-cheer para sa football so ayun thanks Ed ato na Jack balita so, ko bali, balita ko basic eh so <laughs> And so, um, thank you again, Football Group, for having us. Me, yeah. So, yeah, and so, kapares kami ni Kent na Team team Pinas. Uh, watching the live through Signal. And thank you, Signal, for getting the license para makapanood yung buong Pilipinas. And so, um, for me naman, um, and dumayo ako muna sa Ayala, Manila Bay, which is so fo- so so far from me. Um, yun, so I've yun, yeah, I've met um other um football friends, uh football friends from Italy and yeah, si Johnny Pampa and all others. So um medyo konti yung tao sa Manila Bay, um to be honest because cause it's really far. But on the second game, which was New Zealand, um, napunta siya sa UP Town, and there are a lot of people, and yun, yun yung masaya, kasi bukod sa maraming tao, um, yun yung ating first win. So, talagang um, nanginig yung buong mall. <laughs> Ayun, so, yun din, tas marami din, marami din mga dumadaan, marami din ako nakita mga foreigners na napadaan lang din, pero napatigil nung nakita na nanonood tayo ng football and they were cheering with us. And so, nung pagdating naman sa third game, which was in Glorieta, yun talaga yung sobra na kung nakita niyo yung picture na in-upload ko, the activity center was full. Yeah, and super. All three floors are full of people na nakatingin dun sa balcony. Parang, wow. <laughs> Hindi ganito yung nangyari sa UP Town. May mga tao sa balcony, pero maliit kasi yung space. But, you know, Glorieta Activity Center is really big. So, parang, wow. <laughs> so, yun. Um, it was a heartbreaking result dun sa Glorieta. But everyone was cheering. Everyone was happy. Um, happy despite of what hap- of the result. Pero yun eh, um, nakita mo na maraming, maraming nagsusupport na sa Filipinas natin. Newbies, old fans, players, what have yous. Um, yun, so talagang total support tayo. Yeah. Hmm. Ganun pala yung feeling, no? Like cheering for your own country and you know, all that. Like, I, <laughs> I get it now. Like when I watch it on TV, I see fans na yun, how super passionate they are parang gets ko na gets ko na I, I, I know the feeling now um i was wearing the abante filipina scarf when i was um you know walking around uh uh to the stadium um you know the locals would stop and ask me honestly stop counting how many times i i was stopped while walking congratulating me us saying how we did so well versus Switzerland even if you know we didn't get the win parang ang maganda kasi doon hindi hindi pinoy yung nagsa-stop sa yo like locals in from i don't know siguro mga tourists din na uh, nandoon and uh, alam mo yung i was very happy when we almost failed the RMS during the AFF but in those three stadiums I kid you not, it it truly felt like a home game. So like in total, siguro mga about 75,000 Pinoy no? across all three um, uh, stadiums. Well, I'm not saying Pinoy, but I mean, mostly it's a very Pinoy crowd. So, claim ko na yung 70,000. <laughs> parang ano lang, right? you wish, like what was, what, like what said was saying earlier, na parang, I wish that it would translate locally. Like, that's already outside the country and we can fill the stadium. Parang RMS, I'm sure, well, I'm sure, I'm hoping, you know, if we will have a game there, we could fill the entire stadium. Um, You know, especially when I think about the game in Eden Park versus Norway. Sobrang crazy. 
Uh, ayun lang. Nakapture naman ng FIFA yung reactions ko. So, ito sa social media. So, ano pa na audio pa sa Glorieta. So, <laughs> ayoko na i-explain yung feelings na yun kasi it's very um obvious naman. So, anyway, um let's talk about our overall personal assessment of the performance of the Filipinas in this World Cup. So, the the... One thing that I really like about how we do this is ayoko yung ako lang yung nagsasalita. So that's why I always invite you guys. I mean, none of us here claim, you know, to be football experts and it's all I always have to say, say that. Kailangan may disclaimer because I I don't want, you know, people saying, you know, we're not experts. We're really not and we're not not claiming to be experts. So guys, um any said i think let, let's just start with you your your personal assessment like are you happy do you have complaints what could we improve any standout players hmm. yeah. nasa yun ang bola sir well overall i'm satisfied with our first showing like i would have wanted it i would have wanted the filipinas to reach the round of 16 pero just being there in the world cup is a win already uh tapos if may problema ako i guess it's the way we played against norway kasi uh, we were playing so well the first two games like it was such a head scratcher na bakit nag iba sila tactically going into the game against norway i mean i heard that uh sofia wasn't feeling well so Coach Taj had to adjust, but it seemed like we were trying to attack during that game against Norway. Key the golf in class when we faced Norway, like physically, tactically, and skill wise, they were just a uh, they were just head, uh head head and shoulders above us. And I don't want to say that the the girls played bad, but they did, <laughs> they did during that game. Uh, I think, siguro after the first goal or the second goal, uh, Coach Tad should have adjusted. Like, uh, as seeing it, seeing it there live, like I've seen how Angie and Alicia were getting burned in the flanks. Like, uh, he could have done something about it. Like, he could have he could have packed the wings. He could have, I don't know, uh. Ano eh, Alicia and Alicia and Angie kept getting caught in no man's land. So, ayun. Uh, the Norway's wingers were having a field day. Pero, like, the disclaimer, we're not football experts. I'm just saying it as how I saw it. Um, You know, take my opinion with a grain of salt. Pero, ayun. Siguro... <sighs> I would have loved the do over. <laughs> yes, I feeling if we played the way we played again, if we played the way we played the, the first two games, I think we could have eked out at least a draw. Ayun lang naman. Gotcha. I have more to add, but um let's go with you, Mona Jack. Ito Mona. After careful review. My decision is penalty kick. <laughs> Bad trip talaga yun ni. Eh. <laughs> I mean, um, the Switzerland game was was ours. Um, we saw how our girls fought for that. But ano, my my decision is penalty kick. So, wala talaga tayong nagawa dun ni. Eh. Bad trip yun ni. Eh. Um, I mean, yun, um. Tama ko. Pag nagtanong ko siguro sa ibang mga ref, parang it's really a bad call. Um, even the other professionals na football analysts, um, they were wondering why was it called a for for a penalty when um nandun na yung na na plant na ni Jess yung pa niya. <laughs> um, yun. So was naunahan lang talaga in the middle of the swing of the kicking foot. But yun eh, na ayun. So um. Ayun, so yun yung akin yung if we were um if we got that Switzerland game um we could have crossed um round of 16 
and uh, with ano naman with no Norway and isa pa din yun so parang feeling ko for me um nadali tayo sa mga ref you know, for Switzerland and Norway Norway most especially because um I was telling my seatmates uh, with Louis and uh, na parang nahihiyang gamitin ng no, ref yung pito niya. Baka bago pa, ayaw gamitin. <laughs> pito, pito naman ref. Ganyan. Ayaw malawayan yung pito. <laughs> so, ayun eh. Um, it's quite obvious with the calls that um, if it's our girls that are stumbling, um, walang tawag. Pero pag nag, na, natama lang ng konti yung Norwegians, it's a foul against us. But there. So, um, if we could have a better... Um, better ref calling the shots then we could have um kung talagang kanila yung game then um the score that wouldn't be that high yun, yun yun para sa akin so thank you <laughs> decision <laughs> naging ano na yun sa amin Sonic sa, sa sa group namin parang every time na sa kakain my decision is <laughs> penalty kick anyway <laughs> I can't. Go on. Well, um, first of all, uh, the match against Switzerland, I really, um, I really think it was a feeling out f- period for our Filipinas. Parang nagkaroon ng opening day jitters against Switzerland. Parang ano? Eh, Switzerland, they're also a, a bit jittery. Halata naman when we were able to pierce through our defense. Uh, spiritually, I still believe that Katrina Giyu scored that goal. Spiritually. So, <laughs> um, pero yun nga, that was a, that was a harsh penalty call. Uh, me and my brothers in football, we've been always talking about that. And the argument really is, even if there's no ill intention, uh, the Switzerland player was the first to that spot uh, when the foul was committed. So, by the book, harsh, but it's still a penalty. Um, it's, an, it's a big bummer. Uh, I think we could have got a very good result out of, it, of, uh, out of that game. A draw, perhaps. But the girls... Um, I think they really uh had a it really took them some time to adapt um in that game and they still showed out uh nakita naman natin yun and the following game New Zealand uh, what else is there to say it's like the most it's like the perfect smash and grab result call it whatever it is but I'm just proud of how the girls displayed resilience there was this moment that uh um, it hit the post and then minutes later they scored an equalizer but uh, it was uh, the VAR saved us because just the shoulder uh, millimeters offside and I was talking with my <laughs> my brothers in football it's like atin na talaga to kasi we've hit the post and then we got a VAR decision in favor of us it's like all the all the good luck has been blessed into our Filipinas that day, and whatever happens, we will never be denied, and that's what happened. Um, against Norway, I share the same sentiment with with said. If we only played, if we only set up like that, uh, like what we did against New Zealand, we could have got a better result. Maybe not a win, but at least a slim defeat or maybe even a draw. Um, I think um, Coach Allen, um, well, take it with a grain of salt as well. I, I think she he let the ladies like come out and if you want to grab it, then grab it. Like parang you die by... The term is you die... You let them go out with their shield like that or if you really want it. But, you know, the quality of... The Norwegian players are just, you know, too high for us to handle, too advanced for us to handle. But looking back, it's still a campaign to be proud of. Many of many observers um counted us off. Um, they really didn't give us a chance 
to even get a point out of these three matches. And for us to win our first World Cup match against the host in in a stadium full of vociferous fans. And that loss was vital to take them out of the World Cup. I mean, it's just momentous. Um, there are a lot of things for improvement. Our transition to offense, I think we should be more speedy. Um, there are times that we are still sloppy with the ball. Um, we get uh, we keep getting um, caught out as well as the sharpness in execution. If you notice the elite sides in this World Cup, like uh, the sides that have impressed so far, uh, Netherlands, Japan, Spain, they all have very good similarities in the way they execute their attacks and defense. Everything is calculated. Lahat sukat na sukat. The, the passes, they're like being telegraphed the way they know how to read each other's game, each other's runs. Um, there are moments that we 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 get that correct, but most of the time, um, it's a bit sloppy. It's a bit slow. But uh, you know, we gotta give our Filipinas a break. It's their first women's World Cup, and for have to, for them to have a glimpse of what the elite sides do, it's already a big step forward. And the player that has impressed me, who else? Uh, Olivia McDaniel. I mean, many Twitter, many Twitter users already said that he, she deserves a deal overseas after the Women's World Cup and yes she she, uh, she does deserve that I mean very one thing about Olivia McDaniel he, he, she's not the most athletic goalkeeper but her positioning and football IQ is top notch I think that's the part of her game that we didn't appreciate that much against the our regional competition in AF in the AFF championship because she was not really troubled. Uh but in the world stage you can see that she's not really like the other goalkeepers that are produce super athletic eye eye popping saves, but you know she's just there. Nakatayun lang siya bigla. She's in the right place at the right time almost every time. Ang galing niya bumasa ng laro. And um no, I'm just impressed with uh what she what she did throughout the tournament. That's consistency. Despite that Norway loss, it doesn't really take away anything from her stellar performance in this World Cup. And overall, the team deserves its flowers as well. Thank you, Kev. <laughs> Ito na. Maglalabas na ako ng sama ng love, Char- Charla. <laughs> no, I'm um, yeah, so I share uh this sentiments I've said in in Ken. I mean this is not to take you know to take away anything from from the team. Um this is just my my opinion as a fan. I feel like we should have stayed in our five three two, sat deep and just you know countered like we did against New Zealand. I really think we should have started with five defenders. I didn't know that Sophia was not feeling well. I, I, for some reason, wala akong narinig na ganun. But if that is true, then okay, that makes sense now. But, um, Norway played like, you know, ano ba, tataga, wounded fighters, kumbaga. Um, they, 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 they showed why they are, you know, true winners and former champions. There was, Weirdly, for the first time, um, some sense of togetherness. I mean, we all know what was happening to the Norway team before that match versus um the Filipinas. So, you know, versus um Switzerland, it was a big mistake for them not to start Garo Graham Hansen. So, ano yun eh, parang bumalik ka ng Rolls 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 sa art Rolls Royce. <laughs> tapos spinart mo lang sa sa garahe mo parang ganun yung nangyari but um i guess because the norwegians really needed that win so Karo really um started uh versus the philippines so we again they needed that win and we allowed them spaces which i'm you know i'm sure they expected and vbr just de- destroyed us we we allowed like I, I I'm not sure if it was Kent or 
said who said it. Um, we were destroyed in the wings. Um, we allowed one v one versus Caro, and that is Caro. Okay, it's never going to work out. To be honest, um, we know the delivery and the quality of you know the ball into the box. It's just everything. Parang every time she has the ball, parang guaranteed goal na yun eh. And I'm sure see si Sophie Roman Hogg, who we haven't heard about previously, is is very thankful. Um, and that's what sh- they should have done versus uh New Zealand and Switzerland. And then we have they had Guru and CJH on on both wings. Tapos you have VBR in the middle. Wala na. We're we're super stretch. All our players had to play like this. <laughs> uh, and I also plus I also think that we don't have enough left in the tank after that win versus New Zealand. Which I think made it also easier for Norway. Norway. So again, that's just my thoughts. Post euphoria. <laughs> uh just you know, looking back at the games in a more objective way. But I'm still a very, very proud and a very happy fan. Um like what you guys said. If there's a do over, then I would have, you know, wish differently. But yeah. It is what it is. Um, okay, so I, I think it's safe to say that we all expected this. Um, we know um, Alan's contract is only until the World Cup. Maybe some of us, <clears throat> Jack, were, were hoping he'd stay until the end of the year. Um, I'm seeing a lot of uh, comments about who should be the next coach. May mga nationalities na nga eh. I mean, to me, I think Again, this is just sa akin lang, ha? Sa akin lang to. To me, the most important question is kung kaya pa ba ni Nino? <laughs> um, or, I mean, if, you know, if Jeff Cheng will give the same amount of support. We, we don't know at this point. We hope yes. And I'm also hoping... Look, I don't know how it works inside in terms of, like, sponsorship, but the federation or the incoming new... Um, elected officials of the federation would need to do like I don't know better marketing to get more sponsors for the team because we cannot just rely on Jeff Cheng alone. We we need help to run this team. We need something more sustainable. Um, that the women's program can run regardless if Jeff Cheng supports it or you know someone else um comes along. So. Your comments, guys. How do we move on without Alan Stajic and his staff? Who wants to go first? Jackie, we want, want to start this time. So, ayun. <laughs> um, regarding that one, um, we really cannot say. I mean, wal- walang, wala ding mga ano, ugong-ugong kung sino ba yung papalit. Ganyan, unlike, you know, like previous ones that there are rumors of this coming up or maybe him or her like that um right now it's really quiet we no idea whoever's going to be the next um coach for our filipinas but um same same sentiment um i hope um our team manager sir jeff is still able to um still willing and able to sponsor the team and um, ang wish ko lang is um, we could we'll be getting the same caliber or higher because um we cannot go back now um we've got more uh, more tournaments coming up um if kahit um siguro kahit hindi masyado about the Asian Games but um we need to focus more on Olympic qualifiers because it's like winning the World Cup as well so. Ayun. So yun lang yun sa akin. Um, hope we be getting a great coach. Yun. Um, thanks, Jack. So just to um, highlight, we have Asian Games in September and then Olympic qualifying for October. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Tama. Said! Ito baka feeling ko maraming sasabihin te. Hmm. Uh, mm, hindi naman. Pero... Parang si Jack lang din eh. I haven't heard anything. Usually, puro ano lang to eh. 
Puro rumor mongering lang. I know, it's awfully quiet, no? Kaya yeah. kinakabala ko. It's, it's kind of, ano, it's kind of, uh, it's scary, actually. Well, this is, this is my personal take on it. Uh, yeah, we all wish na we get a same caliber coach as Stage, but the we can't really rely on Sir Jeff for that. The Federation has to uh what do you call it? Uh pick up its slack. Cause I know it's not that easy you know hindi natin alam 100% what's happening inside pero as far as uh what i've heard uh if we if this is my this is my own opinion uh this world cup alone could cost easy easily 200 million pesos minimum sa ginastos nila for the team for the logistics for the salary of the coaching staff, for the allowance of the players, etc., for the family, for the entourage, ganun. And I think the PFF uh, shouldered the brunt of it, as they should, but Sir Jeff still uh, gave a substantial amount. Siguro, if I'm a guessing man, which I am, I'm guessing na he's the one who's paying for the salary of the coaching staff. Tapos si PFF na bahala sa camps, mga ganun, ganyan. I think it's a, it's a split. It's that kind of split with them. But if I was Sir Jeff, I uh, ito lang yung, ano, yung opinion ko. If I was Sir Jeff, just like Coach Taj, uh, bringing a lowly team to the World Cup is already the pinnacle of my career. Uh, what more is there for me to achieve? Why would I spend my hard-earned money? Why would I still spend my hard-earned money uh, going forward when I've already personally achieved what I already wanted to achieve? So, ayun. Uh, th- that's just me. That's just what I think could be going on in his head. Because even if the brunt of the gastos is from with the, from the PFF, Malaki pa rin yung ginasas niya. So, ang tanong na lang is, willing pa ba siyang ituloy? Gaya nga na sabi ni Jack. Hopefully, he is. And, uh, is he willing to pay uh, stage money again for the next coaching staff? Yun kasi yun eh. Uh, I'm guessing, if ever, we're gonna get someone a tier below uh no no uh, no no knocks against local coaches but it's not their time yet cuz these girls already experienced uh the highs ayaw na nilang bumalik dun sa dati eh hindi na nila gugustuhin bumalik sa dati kasi ano pang motivation nila to keep on playing for the national team if we're going to revert to the same uh dating gawe before Jeff and Coach Taj came in. Why would you want to go back go back there? Gaya nga sabi ng players, when Staj came in, the professionalism of the of the team, of the camp grew exponentially. Ah, uh, yung pakiramdam nila pag camp sobrang professionally professionally run. So, makes you wonder how the hell were camps run before? <laughs> like Ah, uh, <laughs> So, yung sa akin lang, siguro, uh, like what I said before in the last show, for everything football related in this country, let's all temper expectations. Kasi, I personally went to watch this World Cup because I don't know if it's ever gonna happen again. Like, this is the time to watch them. Because we never know if they're going back there. I think, this core, the core of the team is pretty capable, but it all depends on who's gonna be the captain of the ship. So, ayun. Pero if, I, if, if there's anyone on my wish list, 
Uh, I think it would be Nigeria's coach. <laughs> Since, you know, if his contract is up, like, hello, sir, we're available. You're in the US. Most of our players are in the US. So, baka naman. <laughs> Ayun lang. Thank you, Sad. How about you, Ken? Well, I mostly share the same sentiments with with Sad. Um, we've already experienced the highest level of coaching possible with Coach Allen. And I think as fans, we need to appreciate that more. Like what my friend in football said, um, Coach Allen is already in sort of uh, give me a blank, give me, I'll, I'll give you a blank check, write your, write your name on it and I'll pay you type of coach because he's that good. <laughs> Um, the transformational change that he brought to our women's program is really unparalleled. Nothing in Philippine football will match that. Or should I argue, nothing in Southeast Asian women's football will match that. Until now. I mean, wala pa. I agree. Ingo, I agree. Wala pa. <laughs> and, you know, um, as for what's said, uh, pension, I've already expected it as well, that after the World Cup, Coach Allen will go because if you if you come back to, if you if we all go back to 2021, initially, he signed up for just a short-term deal, just to handle the Filipinas to the Women's Asian Cup. And then, <laughs> um, unexpectedly, we and but deservedly we made our way to the women's world cup and then you know um i all uh, i've always i always think that we are lucky because coach allen could have used that achievement to just walk away that easily to leverage it but he didn't he honored his um he had palabra de honor to bring our filipinas into the women's world cup itself in 2023 and you know, I've read an article, you know, back in twenty twenty one that I think we we uh we were able to get him at a lower a bit lower rate than what he usually charges for his services. So I think it's really a lucky, it's a great hire, and you know, involved with uh with a big deal of luck. <laughs> um, and you know, we we uh we benefited from it. Um, regarding who's gonna come next, who's gonna be up next? Silence is scary, <laughs> you know. Um, ane, um, if you see it in the Facebook groups, um, there are a lot of speculations, a lot in the wish list, you know. Um, but you know, I mean. Um, there's this aura of un- uncertainty. And you know, as a football fan, as a Filipino football fan, it's quite unsettling. Because, you know, um, in real quick than just wait for something to happen. And then at the end of the day, we're just like, ah, ano nang nangyari? Anyari na ganon. Diba? So, um... I think we shouldn't really, uh, we should temper our expectations. We should um, realize that we really had a special appointment in Coach Allen to reinforce uh, the points said and Venice said. It also depends on the motivation of the team manager because at the, uh, on one hand, he may think that, oh, my job here is done. I already brought the Philippines to a World Cup. And, you know, anything, that's the standard. Uh, certainly, you want to live on a high. Um, and, you know, um, parang, sobrang dami ko na nagastos. Parang, let me, let me, ano muna, let me enjoy life. Yeah. Yeah. He left on a high. So, ayaw niyo na matarnish your reputation niya if ever. Yep, di ba? Uh, uh, mm-hmm. like, oh, ito, ito na yun eh. Ito na yung, an, aalis akong hero eh, if ever. Yeah. So, yeah. Bakit ko isusugal yung positive reputation ko ngayon? 
na bumalik sa program tapos baka mamaya yung results won't go our way, ganyan. So parang masisira pa siya ulit. Pero, you know, as usual, this is all just speculation. Tapos, uh, I just want to go back to what I said kanina. Uh, ayun. So personally, si Coach Taj at saka si Jeff, they both already achieved what they wanted to achieve personally for their careers and for uh, parang self-fulfillment standpoint. Like, these are massive feathers in their caps. You know, bringing a team from a football backwater to the World Cup is an achievement that I don't think uh, can be that uh, can be na, ma- na magagawa sa ibang bansa anytime soon. Like, sure, uh, Vietnam and Thailand qualify for World Cups uh, regular, sem- regularly, semi-regularly, but they always get blown out <laughs> in the World Cups. Like, we were able to win our debut. So, you can't say the same for them, di ba? So, parang, yun lang eh. Yun lang kaagad na nakapanalo si Coach Dad and against the host, nonetheless. Like, oh my God, my job here is done. What else is there to do? Pero, I wish she would have stayed for the Olympics. Like, that would be another massive feather because, no, I don't think, if, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, may nag-qualify na ba tayong... RP team for football, both men's or women's sa Olympics. Wala, Wala di ba? So, if he was able to do that, like, ngayon, sa A-League lang siya pumunta, A-League lang yung nag-offer. Hell, baka mamaya, Europe na yung mag-offer ng contract sa kanya if he was able to do that. Di ba? Pero, mm-hmm. I don't think he wanted to risk it. I think he also wanted to leave on a high. Kaya, you know, he didn't, he opted not to extend. And then, uh, uh, to add, it's already an, it's um, a crossroads moment for the program. Um, we just hope for the best. Um, I hope if an, um, I still personally want uh, Mr. Cheng to bankroll the program, but if in case um, he decides to take a step back and he deserves it, if he deserves to leave or to, you know, um, siya yung magdidikta in his own terms. Um, I hope that the standards they have set will, you know, will insp- will be the same standards that will be used to gauge whoever wants to follow. Pero kung ako lang, uh, we still, I still think that if we can keep Mr. Chang for another Women's World Cup cycle, that would be, that would be a good, that would be something that uh, na maganda. Four more so, years, dude. Yeah, di ba? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yan, sa mga chismosa, chismosa, tahimik po. So, <laughs> wala po ko talaga kami <laughs> masasabi. It's, yan, so, kaya, kaya, uh, like, ako, sa totoo lang, kinakabahan din ako. Um, eh, more because ayoko kasing masayang. Um, so, ang nangyayari kasi, sto- story time, so like previously, we had, when we, the, the first time we tried to qualify for the World Cup through qualifying in the Asian Cup first, the first time we failed, no? So, when we failed, um, so, we went for local coaches, so that's with Coach Buddha, and then Coach, Coach Lett, and Coach Let did really good. Kasi we clinched the the Asian, was it 2016? The Jordan, 20, was it 2016? Was it the Jordan Asian Cup? That was under Coach Let. And it was mostly homegrown players. And then the Federation hired uh, Raba Ben Larbi, the French guy, a French coach to lead us sa, sa, sa Asian Cup and he only had a few weeks to prepare. Then all of a sudden, it's uh, the core the core team was, you know, all heritage players. So parang ano nangyayari? I think what I'm trying to say is I feel like if we don't get uh, a, new, a new coach of the same caliber, if not higher, um, but I think ang mangyayari ulit is 
the homegrown players will have the opportunity to to play in the national team again. And then if they do well, come Asian Cup, ibang another set of heritage players. Alam mo yon. So parang ano eh, um I kind of feel kind of feel bad because it's a step back, but at the same time, you know, I think in the perspective of the local players, that's that's good because I, you know they'll have the opportunity to play in the national team. Tapos and then here comes the heritage players when we have to play in the Asian Cup. Parang gan- ganun yung cycle niya in the last decade. So it's likely going to happen if we step back. Um, but again, hopefully, um, not because I, I really want to sustain the the current pool of players that that we have now. Anyway, those are just my um thoughts about that. Let's uh proceed to happier happier thoughts. <laughs> Let's talk about something <laughs> positive, no man. Um, the Filipinas homecoming, no. Um, I was, I was very happy to see all the events when you know when the girls arrived, especially the motorcade. I think that was special. I think when when Ken message the sa GC, na parang oh may motorcade pang I'm like, I think ang res ang reply ko was ha ha ha, because I thought Ken was joking to be honest. Tapos nung sinabi pa niya BGC, I'm like what motorcade in BGC. <laughs> Me. So, parang, I was, I don't know, I, I really didn't believe it until I saw the, the post from the Taguig City uh, social media. So, that's that's very special because, you know, that's something that's usually reserved to a Manny Pacquiao, Pierre Wurzbach, or Catriona Gray. Kahit sabihin mong BGC lang yun. Kasi, to me, parang mas ano pa ngayon eh, kasi iba yung crowd sa BGC. Um, but I let you share about that experience, Jack, kasi ikaw yung ano eh. Bida dun eh. <laughs> Puno ka pala. So, ayun. A Saturday was, I think, with, yeah, with the whole homecoming schedule of the girls, uh, sa- Saturday was really the tiring one for me. Um, it's because um, we were a bit stressed with UF because we were trying to get ourselves into the uh, motorcade just to hype the the crowd when it passes by so um kinabukasan saturday morning i went there early together with the with their brothers in ultras filipinas so we tried our best to work things out with the uh, lgu but yeah at the end of the day um we weren't able to join the motorcade so but we um but we did everything that we could to um hype everyone so yeah, and so when it started at the uh, starting point of the parade, um, the girls were really happy because we were singing and there. That was um, we waited for them at the end of the motorcade, which is um at motor at market market, and then there um we were singing and everyone was singing with us. So yeah, masaya naman and yeah, I brought my flag. Yeah, so first time debut ng flag ko so. <laughs> I, I, yeah, bought, I, saw I, bought, the, I saw a photo of that. Yeah, so I bought that I think over a year ago. I will, uh, well, I will, I will look for yeah. it para malagay natin like somewhere here. Jack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I bought that when we qualified for the World Cup because I said that I will use this. I, I don't know how but I will use this. So, yeah. so I used it finally when they came. So I think it's very nice. It's very special for me. So yun. and um, yun, um, what else? Uh, airport. So it was um a bit photo finish announcement. So, so um, I'm glad that there were a cup, a handful of um Bante Filipinas members that came to the airport to welcome our girls. Um, it's not that big compared to our compared to our New Zealand counterparts when they welcomed our girls in different airports. So. Because it's major last minute announcement. Okay, like but, yeah, they had more yeah. time to prepare, Jack. Yeah, so yeah, you know, major last minute announcement here. But um, our girls are happy man, that there were um fans welcoming them, although they were really tired. You could see it in their faces. And what else? What is the next one? Um, yeah, and so there were a lot of fans that came in to Adidas. Then the first 
date the the yeah the first day of the schedule ng welcome I mean homecoming yeah so there was really a, a big a big crowd yeah and so medyo nasala namin yung part ng Adidas because of the line people waiting outside for their turn to meet and greet their girls and so what else um and there were a lot of fans then in boot camp so people inside the store people outside of the store waiting for their time then and same with ano then same with um adidas on sunday when it was um just four of them serena maya haley and ina so it's just the four of them that, that came in yung mga sumabol but there was still a large crowd waiting so you could see that there are um really oh, the girls are drawing crowd drawing support from everyone and um yon sana hindi sila mawala after all of this yon so yun lang yun um we support them all the way so this is just the beginning yeah. thank you thanks Jack. sabi nga ni coach allen welcome to the football party <laughs> It's never too late. Just be ready. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then Dan from Instagram is asking, any preference on the next Filipinas head coach? Can be fantasy, realistic, or interim? Dan. Who wants to answer that? Ken, ikaw. Well, um... Personally, I think we might appoint an interim. We might appoint an interim. Um, um, because uh, you know, there will be a lot of uncertainty surrounding the federation. Um, I think the PFF elections will be later this year. Um, the future of our football programs, not only the women's program, but the whole, uh, local football landscape will change depending on what happens in the elections. Um, so we hope the candidate with the cleanest intentions for Philippine football wins. But uh, going back to the question, uh, I think we might appoint appoint an interim. Um, hopefully they're starting. We're starting to act now. Um, because next month it will be the Asian Games, and um, I think uh it's a big competition. So we need to work on something real quick. Now, um, worst case scenario, we might see um, a local coach to temporarily handle the ladies. Sorry said, but uh, I think uh, that's the most realistic expectation. Uh, call me a call me a pessimist, but I really don't. Uh, I really don't discount anything, knowing the landscape of Philippine football here. So um, we might we might get that or. We might, uh, we might coach, uh, Mr. Cheng if he reaffirms his commitment. I wanna do this for a couple of more years with the program. We might be looking on some, um, how do we say this rigodon, in the A League women or in the coach managerial appointments or uh, managerial sackings after the Women's World Cup. That I th- I hope that happens because we might see like again what Randy Waldrum or. Well, um, Colin Bell. I don't know. I'm uh, just throwing out names that are, I think, feasible. Uh, I I'm mean, all, I'm all Colin for Randy Bell, and Colin. Huh? Yeah, yeah, because Colin Bell. Yep, yeah, because I think uh he underperformed with South Korea. Um, I think they were really poised to make it to the knockout stages with that lineup, but they fell short. Uh, she yung ginigis ngayon online. Despite that, Actually, COVID, yeah. yeah. So I mean, if if coach, if Mister Cheng is waiting for those rigodon things to happen, then we might there are there's a good chance that we might get a good coach, not on Coach Allen's caliber, but at least someone who has the track experience. record yeah. and the experience to I uh, know to handle a squad with uh potential and quality like what the Filipinas have. But again, don't discount the interim. You know, I, 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 I just, I just want to say, I, I agree with an interim coach, but I don't think it's going to be local. Because I don't think any local coach will accept the job. 
Fair yeah. point. Fair point. Fair point. Sight, no? I, that, that's fair just me. Ah. I don't think any local coach would accept the job. Isang linggo oh, sila doon. Diba? Isang linggo on the job, mamamayat ka doon kakaisip. Yeah, so... Okay. Ano mo tatapatan yung stage? Exactly, right? So diba? parang, um, if we're going after, let's say, oh, um, I don't know, parang, because, I don't think Coach Let will be willing, sorry, baka Coach Let is watching, tapos sabihin nyo, ay, mali ka. <laughs> I mean, I just, I just feel like Coach Let will not take the job. Not, uh, not even Coach Buddha. Maybe Marielle or Coach Joyce, but, I mean, our local, local options are limited, and at the same time, a huge part of me thinks that I don't think they will accept the job. That's just me. Coach Let, please feel free to correct me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my si Coach Let, my <laughs> Na point. Feeling ko lang naman yun. Oh, ayan. I feel better said. <laughs> Ay, okay well, niyo ko lang naman. Hindi natin alam eh. Baka kasi mamaya merong local coaches na makapal yung mukha. So, <laughs> grabe na mga. Kasi kung hindi ko rin tabaho na yan. Hindi natin alam, di ba? <laughs> oh, Jackie, I have something. Pero yun, I'm not doing names. You know, I'm just trying to, you know, Generalize lang. Bis naman. Ano, si, naman si said, si said, nyo, si said po yun. Someone has to it. <laughs> yeah, ikaw. Wala po ako sinasabing pangalan. So, uh, yun. Okay, my, my point, na, my point of view naman is, um, not, si, uh, <laughs> same with said, um, nothing against local coaches, but, you yeah, know, we're them. already, yeah, nothing against them, really. But, we're already in that level, eh. So, and our coaches are not yet in that level. So if we hire a local coach, then the whole team suffers. Yes. As clear as possible. We're going to regress. Yeah, regress. I mean, what a name. Um, the whole team will suffer. And, um, you know, we're, we're back to the dark ages of wait, football. Re- wait, lang. realistically, who, are, who, who among the local coaches are qualified? You have to have an A license, right? There's only two. You need to have a pro license. Pro oh, license. Two. Only only yeah. two male coaches have that license here. So who are these coaches? Coach um, Marlon and Coach Aris. Coach, coach Marlon Mar- and Coach Aris. And Kastri. Coach Aris. Okay. Yeah. Is uh, Coach Let a uh, no? A license? Oh, no, no. She doesn't have the pro. I think, I yeah, think but she, ma- she managed the national team before. As, um, I mean... Pag ano kasi, um, major tournament, I think. Like, ah, right? a major, okay, okay. Yes. All right. Yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. But I think, you know, um having been with Coach Allen before, and even Coach Maro had an AFC Pro license, I think, hindi na tayo bababa sa, ano eh, dun sa standard na yun eh. Mm. So, I, I, I agree I, with you, you might get a I refuse. Interview. I refuse. Yeah, for it, for it. Wala rin ako sasabihin. Ayun. Anyway, Jack, uh, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Bigla lang uh, nag-pop sa utak. Like, sino nga ba? <laughs> well, yun. So, aside from yung mga yan, yung mga technicalities and requirements, so, wala. Wala pa talaga sa mga local coaches natin. Even for the two names that you've said na qualified, um, I think they're still not in that level and the whole team will suffer if they will handle it. Again, nothing against them, pero ito yung totoo. So, wish list naman, um, I would go with a coach that has a respect for the team before the World Cup st- even started. And wish this ko lang naman to. Ang naiisip ko lang naman is si Coach Inka. If her contract with oh Switzerland is done. Oh my God. I was gonna say the if, same thing. If, if, if. if, if. <laughs> if Inka. Yeah, because she Inca showed Grace, respect. If you're, if you're available. <laughs> get us. <laughs> so, yun. So, yun. Because um, so, she showed respect to the team. Um, Yon. So she earned my respect by doing that. So if she's available, hi po, sabi ng Filipinas. <laughs> oh, German, no? Tapos you have coach Michael Bison. That man. So let's make it Okay. Um, next question is from. Okay, but ah, si Neil to. Neil, your brother. Neil from <laughs> Instagram wants to know. Bukod sa national anthem, goal at final whistle, what are the other things that made you tear up or cry? Haha. Sinil nga to, feeling ko. You want to start, Seth? 
what are the moments that make you tear up and cry? Be, um, aside from the national anthem and goal at the final whistle. Goal mm. at final whistle. Ang hirap naman noon kasi yun yung mga naiyak ako eh. Pero, okay, sige, said goal. Wait, are we uh, specifically for this World Cup ba? Yeah, oh, this World Cup. We're not talking about okay. anything else. It's just, just this World Cup, dude. I akala ko kasi he's being and he's being general. Ah, uh, uh, siguro seeing ano, uh seeing that seeing the crowd chanting along with us during that Corteo in Auckland. That was a uh, that was a bit that was a bit tear jerking. Hindi lang talaga, hindi lang halata kasi malamig eh. So, wala na lumalabas na, na natutuyo agad. Pero medyo nakakaiyak yung part na yun. Saka yung, yung nadala namin yung UF banner sa New Zealand. That was that was such a huge thing. Like, uh, sa, alam ni Kento, pangarap lang namin mag-away days. So, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of the reason na natupad yun. Kahit we were only four strong. Tapos, ayun, hindi namin, we weren't able to lead the crowd during the game, pero that Corteo gave us boost bumps. Yeah, that, that, like, I was already thinking now, why can't we do this at home? Mag, <laughs> mag ganun na iniisip ko, ba't nakakayak, ba't dito kaya? <laughs> Sa atin hindi. Mga ganun. So, ayun. ayun shout out to Neil. Shout out to the community, kay Shane. Sa mga anak niya. Hi, Shane! Yeah. Hi, Shane. Nagpapashoutout siya sa akin eh. Can I just mention them? Uh, <laughs> ayun. Kay Shane, kay Shari, uh, to, to her girls. Wait, who am I missing? Kay, what's her, what's their names? Wait, let me, let me, let me, Patay give me ka. just a few moments. <laughs> baka, baka, baka magalit siya sa akin pag hindi ko na alala yung names ng kids niya. Kay Shani, kay Sophie, sa kay Shari. Ayun. Sa yeah. kay Noy Shane. Salamat kayo, no? He's from the Visayas as well. So, we formed an instant bond. <laughs> Ayan. And to all the rest of the community, you know, community champions in Auckland that were very, very accommodating. Kila Sir Carlo. Ayan. Hi, thank Carlo. For, for, Rami. Yeah, thank you for Renee. making our time there easy. Ayan. Ayan. I wish, I wish, you know, I wish we could have, you know, sustained the sustain the noise from the corteo to the crowd pero bawal kasi tumayo sa corridors eh so we couldn't lead the chance so ayun pero ah, that was that was such a joy to see thank you sir ken yung var decision against new zealand talaga i mean na <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, ano, uh, the, the, thing here, the thing there is, um, uh, we suddenly stopped singing when that goal came in. It's like, uh, complete silence. No? Come on, come on, come on. silence. Uh, we just look at each other saying, that, oh, oh my God. It's like a fatal ending to a fairy tale of a game. Mm. It was like, then someone, um, some UF lad pointed to the screen to him. War, war. Sila check nila. Then tingin. Then eventually, kasi the ball has goal parang technology already sa loob to check if ano eh, saan yung position possibly of ano um offside, no goal. When they decided no goal, it's like ah! my decision is. Oh, this yeah. Tapos para, ano, yung damit ba? Like, otherless, we're ginagano na yung damit nung katabi. Tapos like, atin to, atin to. Like, yeah, that moment na parang, eh, we, the, the first hit the post once, they're really imposing their physicality on us. They're throwing everything, the kitchen sink, the whole backyard at us, but we were able to survive. It just convinced me that uh, after that war, after that VAR decision that favored us, especially if you consider the context that VAR didn't favor us in the first match, it's like um, there was no way that we won't win that match. 
Baga, all the luck, all the luck, all the fortunate things, all the all the pixie dust, all the prayers in Baclaran and Quiapo and all the churches along the country. It all uh, took effect in that VAR decision. You know, so yun talaga para ano, yun yung moment, iba pala yung moment na when you're in the brink of winning a World Cup match and you know, there was just feeling that this feeling that everything was thrown at the team and you know we weren't we were not gonna be denied you know that those last few minutes there may kaba pero you know that our ladies won't be denied and they were able to get the win thanks Ken oh Jack wala lahat mm-hmm. umiyak yan si Jack eh uy grabe pinaka <laughs> umiyak I have two two lang <laughs> So una um eh uh, tulang uh, tulang pero um for well yeah yung ano yung when it was formally announced that coach Tad is leaving because yon um na ano ko dun sa future ng ng team so yon but if it's within the world cup um yun then same with Kent um having that uh goal for New Zealand cancelled. It's like winning another goal, getting another goal. So everyone was celebrating it. But uh I mean sobrang cancelled goal pero si celebrate natin. So yun parang kasi malapit na tayo manalo eh. I mean, tas bigla pa tayo madodro. So no no we cannot lose this. We cannot have that goal against us. So ayun so yun yun lang for me. Ah, ayoko maniwala. Yun lang. <laughs> joke lang. Joke. Um, ako? Naiyak kasi ako nung na... na ay, hindi. Yung sa Duny din, hindi ako naiyak sa National Anthem. Naiyak ako nung... For some reason, in Duny din, and in Wellington, I was the first one sa Media Tribune. So, nung sa Duny din, pag ka sa Media Tribune, like, walang tao, ako lang, so I was able to, like, sit down and soak it all in, na parang, wow, ito na, ito na yon ito na yon So, doon ako na, doon ako na iyak. May, nagkakana ka ng moment. <laughs> um, and then, next question is from Luke. Luke wants to know what's your favorite moment during the Filipinas World Cup journey. Jack. What's your favorite moment? The way that our girls are enjoying themselves. So, and may kita naman natin yung ginawa ni Kaylee um, before the parade's uh, New, Z- New Zealand game. Uh, she was just enjoying everything. Um, favorite. Um, and um, how they interacted with the crowd. So, as always naman, they always go to the crowd to, to sign autographs, take selfies. But, I mean, um, I know that it, it is a very um, enormous thing for them na makita yung ganong karaming Pilipino in a stadium which is walang wala yung RMS. You know, like 30 plus is like what? Ilang percent ng 8,000? Uh, ilang percent lang nun yung 8,000, di ba? So this is an entirely different ball game for them. And yun, so it's the same team that we know. Um, very humble, very appreciative, and um, yun. Um, and their core is very solid. So hopefully it would still be the same um after this World Cup, and madala nila yun for the next tournaments. So yun, it's their attitude, behavior for me that is really um inspi- inspiring. Thanks, Jack. How about you, Sad? Favorite moment during the Philippines as well, Women's World Cup journey? Seeing the team up close. Seeing them play live in a World Cup. I think that's that's just my favorite moment. Well, for Substa, for ano, if you're gonna, that's my personal favorite moment. But if you're favorite moment, like you win against New Zealand, is it? Iba yun eh. Pero, for for me personally, yung experience ko na nakita ko sila, nakita ko sila sa hotel, nakita ko sila maglaro ng live, nakita ko sila sa World Cup bago ako mamatay. Yun. 
yun ang personally na ano kasi you know alam ni Kentian merong group sa Facebook before na gusto namin makita ang Askal sa World Cup bago mamatay well sorry Askals na unahan ay ng Pilipinas so at least I can die happy <laughs> so yeah yun ang aking favorite moment si the team competing at the highest stage of them all. Thanks, Ed. How about you, Ken? Oh, ano eh. Um, to be honest, I enjoyed every minute of the tournament. Um, parang you're just a happy kid. At, uh, you know, the, the pride, the patriotic um, sentiment in you is has never been in an all-time high. Um, as a football fan, double the excitement. Um, sa journey, well, every second of it, ever since I, ever since the Philippines qualified to the World Cup, I think, um, iba yung feeling kasi parang um, we saw a team grow and evolve um, in our very own, you know, in our very own hands in the lens of a fan. Parang we're, we're fortunate to be in this lifetime that we're seeing a Philippine football team in a World Cup and is preparing to be a World Cup level team. And, you know, uh, another would be the the watch party in Drieta, the moral. Uh, I've never seen many people in Drieta to come together to watch a football match and not leave even if we're losing six goals to it. I mean, the spirit. Um, because we're just happy to be there. It's a celebration of how far Philippine women's football has already come. Tayo, to be honest, as a nation, we're already uh, we're already used to beatings. We're already used to our to hard to hard uh the harsh realities of life here, and for us to you know um you know it's just a it's uh it's just a result that really did it go against us, against an elite team. But at the end of the day, when the final whistle blew and we didn't make it to the next round, it was just all, it was just all gratitude. It was just all thankfulness. It was just all, um, you know, realizing that we are privileged to be in a World Cup. Not many more footballing nations, football mad nations, if they would trade their souls to qualify to the World Cup, they will, but they didn't. I'll mention Indonesia. Indonesia. Because, you know, <laughs> the neighbors can be salty all they want, but they will never make it to a World Cup. Than us. So, so, you know, um, sorry, but, Indonesia. But I'm just going to Asian football. <laughs> yeah, 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 because they're very salty towards us. But you know, again, um, the you, uh, this is true. Ane, unity in diversity. I mean, foot in other countries, football is the great equalizer from all social classes of life, all walks of life coming together to support one team. You know, parang sa ninety minutes nagkabuklod-buklod tayong lahat kahit ano yung mga pagkakaiba natin sa buhay at sa prinsipyo natin sa buhay and that's that made me appreciate the beautiful game more no na parang ang dami nating pinagdaanan pero sa isa't kalahating oras ng football naging isa tayo kinalimutan natin lahat ng mga problema natin iniwan natin sa labas at inenjoy lang natin yung laro it's it's an I I think I'm um I think I've never I, for a while I I would never see it again. Hoping hoping we can you know get it see it again soon. And um shout out then to mga fans na pumunta sa Dorieta. Well, you guys are really amazing. The energy in the activity center is really different. Iba yung dating para kang nasa totoong stadium when we walk. So, um, regardless if you're a new fan that just passed by sa activity center during the Norway game, grabe, thank you for not leaving even if our, if the, even if the score is against us. So, we really appreciate you guys for coming and grabe. So, hope to see you in the next tournaments and continue support for our Filipinas. 
Yes, thank you. Uh, I, 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 I have a favorite moment. I mean, just, 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 Kent already said it so beautifully. So I will not add more. Um, just the fact that you know, we played in the World Cup is a dream come true. So every moment was special. <laughs> All right. Um, Excalibur wants to know who do you guys think will win the World Cup. Well, I'm rooting for Japan because they've been a joy to watch all tournament long. Ah, oh, yes. And it would be such a shame if they get nothing out of it because, hmm. like, they are they're like a well-oiled machine, talaga. So wrong, sarap nilang panoorin. And they're like one of that classic example na they're not as physically imp- imposing as the other nations. Like, like hell. Baka nga mas physically imposing pa tayo kaysa sa kanila. Pero they make up for it with their football IQ and their skills. So, you know, it's it's one... It, Japan is one nation that girls can look up to. Even girls from the Philippines. Like, ayun no. Hindi nyo kailangan maging sobrang takakad. Hindi nyo kailangan maging sobrang uh, athletic. I'm not saying they're not athletic, pero physically, mas mababa lesser sila compared sa ibang nations na tinalo nila at tinambakan. <laughs> so, di ba? That, that alone is, ano, eh, is inspiring. Eh. And I really wish they bring it home since I, we've already seen the mighty US fall. So, this World Cup is like a, it's an open race. Ne. It's anyone's for the taking, pero I'm all behind Japan. Thank you. Jack, you go. Um, same Japan. So AFC, sure. So aside from that, yeah, um, um not yeah, the Sabinani said yung reasons for 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 picking Japan and, and I stand by it as well. So you could see the discipline in the field. So um yun, uh, very very impressive. Um they really play as a unit and um Ayun, uh, nakakabilib sobra. So, hopefully they get it again for this year. And, yun. AFC is supporting you all the way. The Asian sa Manilip. Yeah. Thanks. Jack, Ken? Same. <laughs> Same. Rooting for Nadeshiko Japan. Um, The reason is, the traditional powers, no one has really impressed so far. No, um, the the U.S. women's team is uh, already out. Um, England was put to the sword by Nigeria, lucky to escape on pen penalties. Um, Netherlands, you know, South Africa rattled them a bit and gave them a hard time. Spain, um, you know what Japan did to them, you know. Um, but Japan is a uh, a very technical and you know a very entertaining team to watch. It's like you watch 11 Jackie Savitsky inside the field. 11 Energizer Bunnies who are technically proficient and has a very great level of football IQ. They know what to do. They know how to execute their plays well. They won against Spain only with 23% possession. I mean, and scored four goals. I mean... Hell, how to, uh, do you, yeah. you don't really see that often in high level football, but they took even in the men's game, walang gumagawa niyan. Yeah. Grabe. Yeah, diba? So, you know, um, and plus, ano, um, I think, uh, no one can match their level of ano, the form that they have right now. Siguro, um, they're facing Sweden next as we speak now. Um, Sweden might make it more physically harder for them. But I mean, look at Norway. They're more imposed, they're more physically imposing, but Japan just ran circles around him. You know, so all day if you if you have a side like Japan who doesn't really tire out, knows how to play football uh to their strengths, I I think they'll be able to to win it. Yeah, same. I mean uh, Japan. I you you've said it all. I mean they're so clinical, so efficient. They make it look so easy and so fun to watch. They're just so good. Ang linis ng 
wala ko nila. Sobrang, sobrang ganda panoran. I swear. Ang simple. Ang simple. Yeah. Hopefully, simple we don't fix them. Parang, sobrang <laughs> effortless. Um, but that means, again, I think Japan can win this, but my heart wants Sweden to win. So, yung puso ko. Anyway, so, last question is, what are you looking forward to the most? Looking forward the most, um, first, uh, the next, he- the next head coach, it really matters a lot. Um, yeah. as per what Jack Inseda said, uh, a while ago, the head, uh, we didn't really change a lot <laughs> when it comes to personnel, but the head coach changes everything, you know. Yeah. Um, we need a very good appointment to ensure that the quality and the professionalism instilled in the national team camp is still there and it won't go away. It should be the norm. It should be the norm. Bagan, ano eh, tapos na tayo sa bare minimum. We deserve more than the bare minimum in love and in football. So, you know, um, we we need someone who will really ano eh, um, take take this leaps and bounds and make it a habit. Yung consistency ba ng professionalism with and the quality of coaching. Then second, um, the growth of women's football that will come with this um, this World Cup campaign. We already had Coca-Cola as a sponsor of the Women's League and that's a good thing. Um, we can only hope that... Um, uh, me and Ven are always talking about maybe the other UAAP schools might be inspired to put up their own women's football program, you know, to, to, ano, to uh, because there's a need. We only have five teams in the UAAP offering women's football. And that's a disservice, honestly, with the, we already have a World Cup caliber team, but we're not doing anything to give platforms to homegrown talents. Plus, ho- more ho- more clubs for women in the women's league. Or maybe we empower women who are like-minded, who wants to learn football or to form a even an amateur club f- to play football. Uh, we give them inspiration to do it. I mean, to empower women that football is a sport that you you might love and you will love because ane, um and most especially the young generation and. Third is, uh, last one is Olympics. Um, qualifying to the Olympics is tougher than the World Women's World Cup. I think if we, if the Filipinas do it, and I hope they do it, it will be a very huge boost for football in the Philippines. So I'm anticipating that. Thank you, Ken. Jack? Okay, so I'm excited with the next coach. And yeah, sana same caliber or higher. Mm-hmm. Or si Coach Inka na charge joke lang. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, um, excited then for how our women's team or women's football locally will grow. Same with Kent. Um, it's already a call for improvement. Kasi nandun na tayo. Na, nanalo tayo. E- even if it's just one game, we won one game in the World Cup. It's still big. Kasi... Nakita naman natin yung iba ka, wala eh. So, yeah, it's a call for improvement ulit, and ulit, it's very exciting. Ulit, yung iba, wala. Ah, ayun. No. <laughs> so, ayun, basta yun, sila, wala. <laughs> Joke At lang. At sign, a football. <laughs> ayun, so, yun. Um, hopefully, um, it's a wake-up call then na um, i-improve yung mga curriculum natin. As I've always been saying that that if we don't have the correct curriculum, kahit na meron tayong grassroots program, it will not work. So, ayun, um, level up na tayong lahat. Um, it's not just for the national team, it's the whole football program, regardless if it's men's or women's. Um, yun, kailangan natin level up. Kasi pinakita natin sa mga, pinakita natin sa buong mundo that we can fight. We, we deserve to be there and and follow through lang. So it's very exciting on how it will transform to our local football. And hopefully we could get more than from, ano, um, from our Filipino heritage then. So it's a mix. It, um, exciting fusion ng talents. Kasi, di ba? Um, 
yun. So, basta yun na yun. <laughs> yun. So, yun yung very exciting for me. Thanks, Jack. How about you, Seth? Uh, hmm. Baka medyo lengthy to. Well, what? like what Jack said, I would love to see a football program in place. Um, I mean, if ito na yung chance ng mga trapo magpaka-trapo, like, make, ano, make a, make a, like, lagi kong sinasabi, nakikita naman nila, nakikita naman nila, Kent, pinapost ko to sa, sa mga pinag-uusapan namin sa group chat. Make a legislation na making football mandatory in all age groups sa DepEd. Di ba? Like, doesn't have to be football. Could be futsal. You know, just kicking the ball. I, I, samantalahin niyo yung popularity. Tapos, kasi, if magiging exposed yung mga bata on a daily basis, they will learn to love it eh. Kasi, hindi naman ako pinanganak na mahilig mag-basketball. Hindi naman ako pinanganak na mahilig mag-volleyball. Nag, nag, na-expose na ako kasi tinuturo sa PE ng kinder ako. Ganon. Yung mga ganyan. So, if we can do the same for football, like, what's stopping us? Also, to echo Kent's statement kanina, we only have, what, five UAAP teams? Uh, let's go, let's go bigger. Like, we can, kasi Japan and the US does it. Like, most of their homegrown talents are from the university level. Doon lang nila hinuhugot yan eh. Uh, hindi pa naman sila fully invested sa mga European style academies. Like, most of their players grew up in the uh, university university competitions. Like, from grade school to middle school, inter-school competitions, mga ganyan. So, why not, you know, parang yung ginagawa sa basketball, yung PCCL or NCAA sa US, why can't we do the same for football here? Like, uh, five UAP teams and then they face each other, what, all the time? On a calendar year? It's, it's, uh, the talent pool is too shallow. Eh? So, and this is a good way, this is a better way to unearth hidden gems in the provinces. Na, we, na the, the UAP teams probably miss recruiting. Kasi, usually naman yung mga school teams from Manila, they go to their province to scout, you know, pluck the best talent and bring it to Manila. So, why not incentivize the schools in Man- the schools in the provinces to put up their own programs and go head-to-head against the teams in Manila? So, it could be a nationwide competition. Everybody gets better at the same time. Uh, that's just That's just what I want to see. Also, I wish the PFF would step up its marketing. Like, the Coke thing with the Philippine Women's Football League is a huge thing already. I hope to see more of that. Because we can't continue to rely on people like Jeff Chang. We need money from multinational companies. We need money from, you know, from companies like Smart, like Coke. Uh, you know, I'm just naming names here. Yung mga ganyan. Yung mga malalaking kumpanya na alam mong kaya nilang magtapo ng pera. So, I wish the PFF would really step up its game. Like, wag niyong sayangin yung pagkakataon na everybody is on a high. Like, wag niyong sayangin. wag niyong hayaan na maging katulad to ng 2019 with the men's team. Na nakakualify tayo to our first Asian Cup. Tapos hinayaan niya lang mamatay. Because it would do the girls a disservice. You already did the men's, you already did the men's team a disservice. So, don't, you know, don't do it with the girls. Kasi, the girls brought you to the best. The girls, you know, qualified for the highest that they can qualify ever. So, hindi na babalik yung mga yan su- sa dati. And, uh, lahat ng mga babae na batang babae dito, may titingalain na. And another thing, I hope the PFF, uh, uh, sana di, sana mas lumapit sila sa masa. Kasi I've said something a while ago na I've shared something a while ago with my friends with our football my, my football brothers na as long as the people in the Philippines view football as a rich man's game the masses will never embrace it. So the PFF has to do something to market the, the to market the game to the masses kasi nasa masa ang suporta. 
ano pa kay alam ni Manong nagfi-fish nagtitinda ng fishball sa 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 football if hindi naman niya nakikita yung mga anak niya na naglalaro niyan yung mga ganun mga ganung bagay so there's a lot of things that the PFF should fix could fix should fix to take advantage of this momentous occasion na of us qualifying for the world cup um i have a lot of stuff at the top of my head pero hindi ko na sila maalala yung iba so i'm gonna leave it to that and you know maybe you guys can add some more pero that's just my take on it that's just what i want to see also ito pala on a personal thing sana naman you know you guys pff embrace the hardcore fans like us like we're not we're not your enemies We support the team through thick and thin. We go when it's raining. We go when it's, you know, when it's hot. Like, we don't even care if you're losing 5-0 to lowly teams. We're there to support, to shout. Pero bakit parang kalaban yung tingin niya sa amin? I hope that changes. Diba? I'll say goodbye to Ken because she needs to go. Oh, magbabay yeah. ka na. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Ayan. Man. Okay, so it's just the three of us now. mag na ako ng disclaimer sa start ng... This is a role be, yung sa intro part. Diba? <laughs> the opinions of the guests do not... <laughs> do not reflect the M.A.M.A. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so... Like, like what all you guys said, um, of course, I'm I'm excited to to know who the next coach is because it will really dictate the next, you know, the path for the team and also excited to see the impact of the world this world cup um campaign locally um sabi niyo na lahat but you know we all know it's not going to be um a steady rise but a series of ups and downs so again but lagi tayong may appeal na ganito no yung mga temper your expectations <laughs> parang lagi tayong nakikiusap <laughs> so I, i ask that you know the supporters the new supporters to not be disheartened ano kapit lang kapit lang and, you know like, better days will come yes and like everyone else you know i'm just really really proud very grateful so thank you filipinas for showing the world what we're capable of Um, ayun. Uh, I'm just uh, uh, ang munting pakiusap lang is you know for for the new fans to not be disheartened because we want to sustain the le- level of interest. Um, I would hate for this to ano ba, to regress. Um, and I don't. Oof. I hate for people to say. Na we did not learn from the mistakes of the Ascals. Um, and I'm I do not mean to put the Ascals on the spot. What I'm saying is, um, if you're a Filipino football fan, you know what happened to, um, the Ascals. Um, it was after the miracle of Hanoi, we were able to kind of you know sustain it. There's UFL and all those things. Um, it really helped local football. And then after a few years, that die down, sha. So I would hate for that to 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 happen to the women's program. Um. So it may not be like I already said. It may not be a steady rise, but you know. We think long term. Um. Like like Japan, you know, after the last, their last World Cup, in hindi sila. I mean, we all know what Carly Lloyd did, um, but after that, Japan was in a like a rebuild stage, and look at them now. So, yeah, I'm um, just hoping uh, we could create that. Gusto ko siya ni Jack fusion, like a good fusion um, in the coming years, a good mix of heritage players and our homegrowns. Because yun naman yung aim I think um we would also want um our homegrowns to have the same level of opportunity yes. to you know to give them good chances to to represent us in the national team because inaman talaga ang ang tawag doon 
yun naman talaga yung edge ng heritage players. That's why they're, you know, they're that good. So, uh, we want the same for for them. Yes, said go ahead. Uh, add ko lang. Uh, what I would love to see in the future is a squad composed mostly of homegrowns tapos reinforced by heritage players. Yung mga wala yung reliance natin sa kanila. I mean, pero still, my stance on this is if you're good enough, you're good enough. Yeah. Doesn't matter if you're a heritage player or a homegrown player. So the challenge is really always on the local coaches and the local players to step up and be as good as, good as the heritage players. It's not the fault of the heritage players na they're at the level that they're at. Kasi pinaghirapan nila yan. Yeah. Uh, hindi ko sinabing hindi, hindi ko sinabing hindi nagtatrabaho yung local players. Pero they know themselves na they have a lot of catching up to do. To be at the level of the heritage players as of now. So, the onus is on the PFF to make sure that our homegrown players reach the level required na katulad ng sa heritage players so that we can remain competitive for a long time. Yeah. That's me. Whatever he said. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, that's just the point. You know, we just want to make sure that um we help the homegrown players reach you know the the same the same level it it and it's not going to happen anytime so, soon yeah it's it will take i don't know another world cup it's cycle going to have to change dramatically yeah. yes exactly so i and honestly another thing that i am looking forward to is the discussion about the filipinoness of our players so are we gonna talk about that? Why well, you wanna talk about it? <laughs> We're supposed to end this now, but if you wanna talk about it, I'm I'm ready. It's like another hour. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna take another hour. So maybe that's for babal- big number babal- 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 Maybe for for an no, hour. Ba- oh yeah, it's it's two AM here. Just so you know. Yeah, and it's twelve AM um, here. Yeah, so uh I guess just um Maybe that's for another episode. But yeah, just, just to just to close it. Um, because of this, I hope that um people are more aware of you know the 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 diversity in when it comes to 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 football. Um, so that in the next you know tournaments, parang I wish I wouldn't read headlines like um. USA's, you know, B team or C team or whatever. Um, and you know, just be Filipino. And not not question their their loyalty. Uh it's 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 hurting. I mean I'm not the player, huh? But it's maybe I'm just too invested in this, but you know, it 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 hurts when they kinda question your 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 loyalty because people don't don't see the the hard work these these players put in um and it's like and it's a little bit of blood sweat and tears so yeah ayon so thank you um sabi sa yo eh jake eh, four questions lang pero parang ang tagal na butay dalawang oras siguro uh, more than one hour na naman um <laughs> I I've been trying to keep it like less at the thirty minutes. I don't know. Anyway, um, I've tried that. That's impossible. That's it. I don't know. I'm gonna one hour episode. Uh uh. I mean, I mean, if people complain about you know, about thirty minutes long. Para para. Pang pang long rides yung podcasts natin. Yeah. Uh uh. Yung actually, I I it's it's a good episode to listen to if you're traveling from like the Smarinius Cavite to your office in Makati. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, yeah and well okay lang man kasi most of the I mean just to share the 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 podcast um audience is actually more working crowd ang pinakamarami kong listeners ay nasa 30s above oh yeah same <laughs> so then <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, mga 30 plus. <laughs> mga matatandang chismo sa chismo sa sarap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yon. Pero sa kung gusto mo ng mga baguette sa TikTok, okay. I don't, I don't have the patience. Too old for that. I'm too um, old for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm too old, guys. Sorry. I mean, I try, but I just can't do it consistently. It's it's too much. I don't have... I have tita energy, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah, TikTok anyway. is an entirely different planet. I, mean, I can't. I can't. Trin- <laughs> I can't. Um, yeah. Uh, so thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, so I guess our next episode would be. Oh, what now? Uh, maybe when the the new coach is announced, we should. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> When the new coach is on, yeah. So, um, again, thank you. Oh, before I forget, um, <laughs> talagang sa dulo ko, talagang, Denise Vittorio of Sevens. Hello. <laughs> Mama, shout out. Shout out. Um, yeah. Uh, so there. Thanks, guys, and thanks, thanks for listening, watching. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and see you in the. Thanks.